So I, I think uh, I have one more kind of big topic area that I, I'm very interested to hear you guys on. Figure we keep this first one kind of short and sweet right. for, for viewers. Okay. Um, what do you, where do you see the future of data science going? Maybe in the next uh, five years to, before we get too crazy, you know. A <laughs> lot of things will be automated. Uh, if I consider an example of Excel sheets, which people are using, I think that part will definitely get automated. Uh, if you also have a knowledge of advanced Excel, I think that will be getting automated. Um, there will be a lot of automation library that will be coming up, you know. As you can see the example of AutoML, you have uh, H2O.ai. Now PyCarrot is also there. You know, I had the talk with the author itself recently. That's all, that was very cool. The, right, right. Yeah. Uh, in one of the uh, podcasts, I asked him, like, how, how does the future look like? And he's saying that, yes, in some days, my next version is also coming up. You know, in 1.1, he was saying, uh, with respect to PyCarrot. So a lot of things will get automated for at least come, upcoming five years, yes. Uh, now, if I, if I consider about some of the things, like some of the life cycle, right, which we do it manually, that part will get automated completely. And this does not mean that uh, a data scientist will lose the job, no. There will be some more further extension of automation that will be going on as you go ahead, right? As I said that, it is always a continuation, an evolution chart. Each and every day, something new or the other thing new will be coming up. Uh, uh, apart from that, a lot of companies, trust me, a lot of companies will move to AI. I, I definitely have that you know, confidence because uh, I've attended a lot of uh, tech meetups also. Okay? And there, when I talk to people from other companies, right, what they are thinking about AI, what they are thinking about ML, you know. So a lot of things come over there. They say that, okay, the higher management people have told, now they have to move into AI, you know. They have to start making something innovative, uh, considering machine learning. They have huge data, right? They have 10 to 15 years of data, but they just can't delete that particular data, right? They have to make use of it. They have to make use of it in a right manner so that they can make a lot of profits in their company. So currently, according to one of the survey, they told that only 10% of the, of the companies are started uh, using AI in their domain, in their work. And still in the upcoming five years, more 25% will be moving slowly. You know, and the best example that I would like to give is about the startups, right? Startups in India are so much right now who are actually working in AI, machine learning and deep learning. So many apps they have created where they have implemented some of the wonderful deep learning uh, problem statements and they are actually showcasing that. And many of them have got funding with respect to that. And you know Google also, right? They try to buy some startups quickly as possible when they see something innovative over there, right? right. So that kind of things are there. Uh, probably in five years, uh, as I said, 35 to 40% of the companies will move to AI. A lot of things will also get automated as we go ahead. Very cool. What do you think, Janet? Yeah, I, I also agree. And and like currently there, there's a lot of uh, like marketing strategies in Thailand. Uh, so whenever they say like, okay, this is made based on AI, people would be like, oh, wow, this is probably a very good product. And so right now it's, there's, a, uh, there's a market for that. And so I believe that in the future, uh, in the next couple of years from now, AI will play uh, an ever increasing role. And um, particularly right now, a, a major component that AI is playing in Thailand is chatbot. And so all banks, uh, commercial companies, uh, travel companies, so they're harnessing these chatbots in order to uh, provide real time uh, assistance to customers. And so I believe chatbot will be one of the uh, key areas for, for businesses in the future as well. Very and, cool. and, and in, in education, and in education uh, AI, uh, particularly in uh, scheduling of the classrooms uh, in order to optimize the, uh, the, what do you call it? So normally classes that are empty, uh, universities are now aiming to rent them out to outside vendors so that they could harness the empty classroom and make some extra buck, uh, probably on the weekends as well. And so AI would be able to help in uh, managing the classroom and optimizing the optimal usage of that. Right. Very cool. Huh. I, I agree with you guys. I think automation is, is what is going to happen. I also think that there's going to be a transition of the data science role in general. 
So I talked about how in the US we, we generally see people more interested in the business as well as or in like almost like pure machine learning engineers. I think you're actually going to see some data scientists moving really heavy on the technical implementation side where they're basically, you know, using these automated tools very heavily and advancing as far as they can go. And the other side, you're going to see data scientists almost becoming like uh, management consultants where they're able to interface with the people who are doing the very heavy data lifting and actually communicate that to the business. So, you know, I, I think the, the scary thing for, for CEOs, business stakeholders is that, oh my goodness, we have this technology and I don't understand it at all. Um, you know, part of a data science role in the future, I believe is going to be saying like, Hey, this is what all of this stuff is. It's not intimidating. It's very valuable to us. And this is how it's going to drive value to our business. Because, you know, in the consulting work I do, that's one of the things that we see is that people at the top, they don't always understand the nature of data science. They think it's a black box. They think, you know, like I can't trust it if I can't, you know, not feel it, feel it with my hands. And, um, for companies to succeed, they're going to have to stop being intimidated. And, and maybe that's part of a data scientist's role as well.